guys, Mandy with Tidy Sticky Mama here, and today we're gonna clean out this fridge. It's been a little abused since we switched to bi-weekly shopping with the pandemic, and we've just been, you know, cramming it full of food. <laughs> and being honest, I haven't done a full clean on it since we moved in a year ago. So it's super overdue. And uh, yeah, I'm not exactly what, sure what we're gonna find in the crevices, but hopefully it's not too bad. <laughs> and since I'm pulling everything out anyway, I might as well give it a new organization while I'm at it. So let's get to it. First, I know having three half gallons of milk in your fridge is weird. I get them from the kids' lunch pickup thing and can't tell them no, so. <laughs> There's a little bit of zoning in there. You can tell that I had the idea, but things have definitely gone awry somewhere along the line. So we're gonna fix that. So there's not a ton of stuff in here right now. I gave us some distance between the grocery trip and <laughs> cleaning it out so that I don't have to move as much stuff out. It just makes it easier. If you think this is going to take you a while or you do have a lot of stuff, you might want to see if you can grab a cooler or like a refrigerator bag or something to put your things in while you're cleaning it out. That way you don't lose any of your food quality. I don't think this is going to take me very long, so I just have a laundry basket I'm going to hook it all in. While you're pulling things out, it'll make your job a lot easier putting them back if you try to keep them categorized. That doesn't necessarily mean keep them together by what shelf you pull them off of because, you know, when it gets messy, sometimes things aren't really with the things they should be with. Be sure to keep an eye out for things that have spoiled or gone past their expiration date beyond a point you're comfortable with. This is the time that it's going to be easiest to either put them aside in their own pile or better yet, just straight in the trash can. If you compost though, make sure you pull out any vegetable matter or anything else compostable in your fridge and take that out as well. If you happen to find that you've, say, got two half-full bottles of ranch, take the time to make them into one bottle if the dates are close enough that you're comfortable with that. So that's not too bad for not having been properly cleaned in an entire year. I mean, I gave it a little wipe down now and then, but I didn't like pull everything out like this like I should have probably multiple times. <laughs> I'm going to pull those two drawers out and take them over to the sink and wash them out with soap and water. The rest of the fridge, I'm just going to use my all-purpose spray on. But before I do that, I'm going to start by taking a dry paper towel and corralling all of the loose little crumbly bits into one spot so that I can then take my little hand vac and vacuum it right out of the fridge. That way, I don't make an extra mess on the floor and, you know, if I'm going to vacuum it anyway, what's the difference doing it in the fridge rather than putting it on the floor first, you know? Then I'm just going to wipe everything down really well. <laughs> You'll see, um... My fridge has what's, let's, we'll be kind about it and call it custom shelving. <laughs> uh, it, it came with the house like that. And you know, it's, <laughs> it's a good example of use what you have, but um, I'm not too thrilled about it. <laughs> I'm always a little afraid that I'm going to break that top shelf there because as you see, it's literally just a piece of glass set on top of a uh, block of wood and what appears to be the remnant of 
what was supposed to be that top shelf there. The other really annoying thing is this grate <laughs> that you're about to see me working on is the bottom shelf. It doesn't attach to anything, it just kind of rests on top of those drawers for the most part. Um, it, it kind of sits in the back of the fridge a little bit, but mostly it's held up by the drawers, which can be kind of a pain when you're trying to get things out of the drawers and then put the drawers back where they go. The door was quite a bit grimier than I expected and it was not cooperating with my paper towel and Mrs. Meyer spray whatsoever. So I ran into my cleaning supply stash and grabbed a couple melamine sponges. If you don't know what that is, it's a Mr. Clean magic eraser basically, but not Mr. Clean. And <laughs> it's you can find them at the Dollar Tree. I think it's like you get like two sponges in a pack for a buck. But I went online and ordered a pack of like 60 of them for $2. So I have a ton of these and they work really well for if you have anything tough and stuck on. The one thing that you do kind of need to be aware of using them is that they can take the paint off of your wall. <laughs> um, I learned this the hard way in a couple places, so just be aware of that if you're using them on your walls, be gentle. The other thing is that you should really go afterwards with a at least a damp paper towel and wipe off where you've been with the magic eraser because especially if you're in a space like this that can hold some liquid at the bottom, you'll just end up with like streaky, gross water from everything that you've been scrubbing with that eraser. And to really get it clean, you're obviously going to need to get rid of that. Some of you are probably wondering why I don't take the fronts off those shelves. Well, because they won't come off. <laughs> I suspect they broke at some point and like my custom shelving, had a quick fix applied, likely in the form of Gorilla Glue or something. <laughs> I really cannot wait for there to be space in the budget to replace this thing. It was part of the plan this summer, but then COVID, so maybe next year. I mean, it's not like it's actually broken to a point that it affects the function. It's just a little irritating, but still keeps the food cold, so we'll keep it. For now, anyway. There it is, all squeaky clean. And it smells good too. I really should have done this a while ago, but you know, life. But yeah, time to fill it back up. Like any well-organized space, keeping things in zones by category is important. How you draw those categories is up to you, but I find sorting by types of food or things often used together works best for us. I tend to use a combination. Like you can see in the door there, I have the Parmesan cheese next to the marinara sauce. 
but then down in the bottom I also have an entire drawer that is just cheese products. So while the Parmesan cheese could go in with the rest of the cheese, I keep it with the thing we use it with most often. Sometimes things fit better in something other than their original packaging, like my grapes there. Do you repackage anything in your fridge? Let me know down in the comments if you do, or if you've got any other great tips for keeping the fridge tidy. If it's something that I haven't heard before and I end up using it, I will totally give you a shout out. that's it. It looks so much better now, doesn't it? You can actually see everything that's in there. There's open space for when we go grocery shopping next week. Great to not just have to kind of cram stuff together and hope you don't squish anything, right? All of our drinks are accessible. The leftovers are easy to see. My kids can actually see the vegetables that they should eat some more of. And Things are in obvious zones and it should be easy to maintain as long as everybody actually tries and doesn't just throw things in there. Just a little bit of a tour real quick. You'll notice I didn't do the freezer part and that's because I've got a chest freezer too and it makes more sense to do both of the freezers together, I think. It lets you see better what all you have. I'm sitting down because that was exhausting. I was in a bit of a rush trying to squeeze this into nap time and even so, it took me about an hour and a half. So, mostly because those bottom drawers were nasty. But I did it, I squeezed it into nap time and I'm even having time to sit down and talk to you still. So, yes, <laughs> mom win. But anyway, I'm happy. I think I did a good job in there, I've got clear zones. I've got some things put into bins that I didn't before that are going to make it a little more accessible and easy to use and more importantly easy for everyone <laughs> to keep neat. I had had a bin that you saw was empty in the door that houses our cheese sticks and um, makes it easy for the kids to grab their own and there's a green handled bin in there from the Dollar Tree that has been my longtime sandwich stuff bin. So it's nice when you want to make a sandwich, you just grab it and you've already got your cheese, your meat. You know, sometimes, you know, the end of, a, end of the bread, it fits in there too a lot of the time. So yeah, good stuff. You'll notice I didn't label any of the bins and that was completely intentional because when you're putting together an organization system or a storage system of any sort for a fridge, it needs to stay flexible because you don't always buy the same things, especially when you have kids in the house and they'll go on a streak of, I gotta have strawberries, I gotta have strawberries. And then you finally buy what you think is enough strawberries and they decide they hate them. So suddenly your strawberry storage turns into waffle storage or something. You know, it's not perfect, but it's done. And done is better than perfect. All right, guys, well, that was fun, wasn't it? Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see what else I've got coming up. And check out a couple of playlists while you're here. There's some good stuff there, all right? Anyway, my camera is running out of battery, so I better wrap this up. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.
I get the hands. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say. Hey Selenia, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah, you can play your spider game now. Thumbs up. Subscribe!